Okay, so we have the same IP 2012 volt here. The calibrator on this is the same as on a 240 volt. They have the same calibrator unit, so no adjustment between the two models. First up, you've got to make sure that when you shut the door is completely closed, the light, bottom blue light comes on. When it is closed, As you can see, the blue light now has come on, the die set is now closed. Okay, you should have no less than a 0.01 tolerance on your setting. It should be right because you've got a 0.3 tolerance when you're doing your crimping under and over, so you're taking away from that straight away. Bear in mind when the die set is made, it's made as one piece and then wire cut through here. So there is going to be a gap between it, but that is a closed position. If it's not, we remove this unit. So we go back to zero. So we have zero on the dial and zero on the top. So we can say that it is actually zeroing down to where it should be. So at this point in time we've got a 22mm die set in here. If we were to crush anything inside there, it should crush at 22mm. If you've got a variation that that's maybe saying half a mil out, you undo the little grub screw on the side here. Some of them have a normal screwdriver on it and some of them have an Allen key. So you undo that little lock nut. Don't screw it right out because they're darn easy to lose. And then you slide this whole piece off the shaft. You haven't moved anything on here, you haven't moved anything on there. This keeper on the back is very, very important, it stays in its same position. Don't lose that. They're pretty hard to get hold of. That's designed to actually locate in these little pins around here, and it locates the dial where it should be. So we're now on zero. If we were to adjust this by turning it that way, anti-clockwise, you will make the machine crush more than it would normally be going to. So if it was half a mil short of where you want it to be, and you open that up, it would go down further. If you want to stop it sooner, you move it to the right. And pretty much one revolution is one millimetre. Bear in mind, when you are doing this, you don't adjust this dial or bump that from where it was because once you've changed that you've got to start calibrating the whole thing again. Make sure that this is tight in the system. Should have a wee spacer in behind it. Some of the models have a spacer tucked in behind it very thin, some of them have a thicker one. Make sure that stays there otherwise your calibration isn't going to work. Bear in mind this is what they call a limit switch. So if you understand what a limit switch does, basically goes so far to the current and cuts it off. So that's all it's doing is a limit switch. So if you want it to go deeper, you screw it left. If you want it to stop earlier, you wind it in. So it hits the calibrator before then. So put this back on again. Line it straight up there. Hold it tight in with here with your thumb. So you can get it screwed on properly. This little grub screw doesn't need its neck run but it needs to be tight. It's all tight. Only time you use this piece here is to lock it. It's just like a normal micrometer lock button or thumb screw on the top. If you're operating it yourself, no one else is going to be fiddling with it. You don't really need to use that. It's just to stop you bumping it so like this lock, it won't move. So your calibration won't be wrong. So every time you set up to start with, crimping a new hose, you should make sure that it is actually coming through onto zero. If you're doing one hose and you do a batch of 20, you're fine. But if you just come to it after a while, just make sure check, check your crimping is coming right down. So to recap on it, open it, light's gone off. Light's on, it's completely compressed.